Okay. Well. Then we have Han Solo's blaster. <laughs> Ooh. With the inbuilt sound effect. I like it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That is nice. I... I am digging this. Let's go. All right, and welcome back to the channel, everybody, and I hope you're doing fine. So today we're going to talk about patch 1.15. No, it's not out yet. That will release next Wednesday with the final part of the event series. Now, there's a lot that we will discuss today. Normally, I don't go into like these levels of details, but today I think I want to do that. I'm still not covering everything. <laughs> like, for example, uh, the controller aim assist support changes. I'm not going to discuss this because I'm not playing on console and I have no experience with that. So timestamps are in the description below if you just want to skip uh, the progression rework or the balance changes and you want to talk about the new guns, then you can do that right away. Let's get started. And I want to start with the progression rework. They completely changed that. Now, every gun will be available at rank 1. It's important to mention, though, it's the base weapon. So you get the base Winfield, the base Mosin, the base Vetterly. And then the variant and custom ammo will be unlocked by grinding XP. Also, at the end, you know, when you have this Bloodline XP loop that gives you money once you reach rank 100, that is roughly doubled. Now, there's another thing that they did. So, the threshold for leveling up a Bloodline level is now slightly lower. So, you should reach rank 100 faster now. Then, now you're probably wondering, how does it work now with tools and consumables? I understand now how it works with the weapons. Now, the tools and consumables, they are now locked behind bloodline levels so you don't have to use 20 vit shots or something like that to unlock the bigger vit shot so they are all bound to levels and i think at level 60 something you have all tools and all consumables unlocked i like that because a few things like the i don't know poison trip mine or back in the days the flash bomb was just very annoying to unlock and now it's just at set levels I don't know what is behind which level and a few tools and consumables will of course be available at rank 1, like for example, regular tools and medkit charges and stuff like that. So uh, I think I like this. <laughs> it was just one of the big issues back in the days when you prestige, although I'm not somebody who prestiges a lot, that for example, you will reach normally rank 100 before, for example, going through the whole Mosin chain because you unlock the base Mosin, I think it was at 60, 70 something, and you just made the level progression in the bloodline faster <laughs> before hitting aftermath level. So I think this will be nice. I like this a lot because always being limited and you cannot play the stuff that you enjoy, at least now you can play the base variants of the guns. Okay, let's jump to the next topic. Now this goes hand in hand with the progression rework and that's the XP rework. Killing a hunter, at least right now, gives you 300 to 500 XP. It depends on are they lower in your matchmaking or above you in stars. Now all hunters give 450 XP flat. No matter if they are on your MMR, lower, higher, doesn't matter anymore. Also they increased overall the XP that you get for slaying AI. There's one catch though players don't share weapon progression anymore. I don't know if you were aware of this, but if you play a Vetterly and your teammate is playing a Vetterly Bayonet, you're both in the same weapon family and you're both getting XP for slaying monsters. Doesn't matter if the Vetterly Bayonet friend is killing it for you, you get the XP as well because you have the Vetterly in your hand. But with the faster unlock system and getting more XP per AI, I think you will not feel that too much. Another thing that is nice is that the XP overflows now. That was always annoying. You were like uh, 2 XP off of unlocking the Mosin Bayonet. Uh, so of course you step one grunt and that's yay unlocked. And then all the XP that you earned during the match was lost. Now it goes right into the next weapon variant, which is cool. Makes sense too. Now uh, very quickly here I'm going to show you an overview of the XP that changed. 
Grunt is now doubled, Hellhound is like a third more, Hive is doubled, Immolator is 10 XP more, Amitad jumps to 300 from 200. I think the armor is unchanged, but you see already that, sure, you don't share weapon progression anymore, but the XP is so much higher compared to before. So I think that will be nice. I think we have one more topic that we want to talk about before we can finish the whole XP thing. And that's gonna be the weapon XP family. Now this sounds a little bit weird, let me explain this to you. The amount of XP that you need to unlock the next variant or custom ammo depends on the ammo type. So if you're playing a compact ammo gun, for example the Winfield, it costs you 450 XP to get to the next level. So that would be for example two meat heads. Not that much ammo, right? If you play a medium ammo gun, like for example the Winfield Centennial, you need 600 to reach the next level. If you play a Mosin, it's 900. Now always keep in mind that the primary ammo type is dominant for deciding what kind of XP you need. For example, the Lamat. The Lamat has a shotgun shell attached to it, but it still counts as compact ammo. Also, sometimes you have different ammo types in one weapon family. For example, the conversion pistol is compact ammo, but at one point you need to grind the uppercut unlock, and it's still in the same weapon family. It means that you need 450 while you grind the compact ammo, but once you're about to unlock the uppercut, you need 900. All right, I think that's most of the XP rework. I think it's interesting. Might even prestige once just to check it out. I don't know because then I'm weirdly enough prestige 51 and that would look weird. Let's see. Okay, then this is a short topic, but I just want to let you guys know that Weapon Inspect gets a second batch. Now, still not everything is in the game, but now all rifles and shotguns can be inspected. I think this is nice. People are always asking me during the stream what's a hotkey for that. It's I on PC. With Xbox, it's Y when the weapon wheel is open. For PlayStation, it's triangle when the weapon wheel is open. Just to have the full picture here. I like this. I already liked it with the throwing knife. I think that's the best animation. I swear to God, if we get an inspect for the beetle and we cannot scratch the chin or give it a little pat on the hat, I'm gonna be disappointed, okay? I'm just gonna say it right now. We need that, all right? Then, next up, we're gonna talk about new burn trades. Okay, let's talk about this for a minute. Some event trades from the past are returning as permanent burn trades. Now, what the hell are permanent burn trades? Now, of course they burn, you lose them, but they're not event specific. The same as Shadow, for example. You can still find Shadow in the game, but it's insanely rare. I'm aware of that. But once the third event is over, like from our chain of events that we have right now, they will stay in the game. You can get them from Metats or by chance as a trade that you find randomly in the world. Keep in mind, they should be glowing red. Now, the first one is Death Cheat. I know, but uh, the if I look at my last couple of weeks and months, Shadow was so goddamn rare. Should Death Cheat be just as rare, like a unicorn? I think I can live with that. Your Hunter is saved, but your equipment is lost. On top of that, should you burn out, your hunter has only the left bar, the 50 bar left. All the other bars are lost, not restored, and you have to rebuy them. Another trait that comes back is Relentless, which I like. The bar is not lost when your hunter is downed. I think this is cool. I don't know how it visually works or if there's any visual effect in the game. I didn't see that yet. So don't be surprised if you shoot somebody, they get downed. They send up, you shoot them with the sparks, and they're not dead. Okay, I don't think there's like this lightning effect or something that you don't lose the bar. It might be. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know how impactful these new burn trades are gonna be. I don't know if they will tune the drop rate, because right now Shadow has 0.0001% of my matches any impact because I find it maybe once every three days. And I stream this game as a living. So, there you go. But I like it. It also shows that uh, the previous events are always a little bit of a testing phase. 
can we implement an event trait? How strong is it? How rare should we make it in case, for example, Death Cheat? I hope it's gonna be rare because it was so annoying at one point to always go up against level 50 hunters that just nobody lost. So, yeah. Relentless is pretty nice though, and I still want a few of the event traits coming back. I preached it already during my streams, like for example, Instinct for the bounty carriers, or maybe even Remedy would be nice to get it back. But okay, we have more topics to talk about though. Gunplay updates. Well, there is not much here. It's more some quality of life and some cheesy tactics fixing, I think. So let's talk about this. So dark side doesn't interrupt shooting. You're probably like, what the hell? What, what does that mean? Now, what you could do is, for example, take a label with iron sharpshooter. You shoot and you're kind of stuck in this ADS animation, right? You can hit dark side after your shot and you get kind of thrown out of this animation and you can, well, quickly move again, right? Which you can't while you're stuck in this ADS animation. This is not really working as intended, so uh, they're fixing this right now. Then the next one is bounty icons are hidden while ADS. I have mixed feelings about this one. Of course, it's nice that it disappears when you aim, because sometimes it's covering, you know, the enemy or the bounty icon is just not in a good place where you kind of want to see. So it disappears while you ADS. It makes wallbanging harder, though, on bounty carriers that you killed. You know what? That's actually a good thing. So right now you see a bounty token through the wooden wall and you just aim at that with your long ammo or your FMJ. And the moment the icon disappears, you know they got picked up and then you shoot and most likely you will kill them again. I mean, you can still hear it when they get rest, but it's gonna be a little bit tougher right now. The next thing is no more weapon swapping while ADS. That's uh, an interesting one. Remember, or you've probably been there too, you scope, through your motion sniper and uh, it's telling you this this whole time do you wanna swap to do wielding a new army because you're on top of a body that you just killed that's gonna be gone and I honestly like that so the moment you ADS this prompt for weapon swapping will disappear and I think this is a nice quality of life because that was annoying but we have a few more balance changes that we need to discuss and we're gonna do that right now Okay, there is a lot now and there's just some things that are wow and some that are like, okay, we really want to mention this. And it's gonna shoot in uh, very awkward directions, so this is not really a bundled topic, so just, just hear me out, okay? So first of all, all short Mosins have less recoil. I don't know if the recoil was the big issue, it was more this way and that's the reason why people didn't take it. But we have to try that out with Iron Sharpshooter and maybe it's noticeable and we play them more. The cycle time for dual wielding the Lamette is slightly increased. Okay, I'm not a dual wield fan so I don't care about this too much. Also, I don't see dual wielding Lamette that often, but okay. Now though, it's getting interesting. Lamette shotguns are now on rival hand cannon level. This includes the upper mat 2. So that is really cool, a buff for that shotgun because yeah, they are so unreliable and they're actually pretty trash. They're probably still trash afterwards, but maybe they're better. Let's see. Then we have also for the Winfield Vandal Dead Eye and for the Springfield Compact Dead Eye, they have now less sway. So these two Dead Eye variants, only the Dead Eye variants have less sway. I think I like this because they're already not that easy to use. Buffing them a little bit, I think, is fair. Then we have a Dolch buff, randomly sprinkled in there. <laughs> the dual wielding for Dolch, the spread gets reduced. So yeah, it should be easier to dual wield now. A pair of Dolchs, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, and I think that was necessary actually, Increase the spread for the uppercut precision and uppercut precision dead eye. I think that's fair. The crosshair bloom was way too tight and you could just hip fire people close range and you didn't have to add ADS and you got some really good results with that. That is justified. Then the Derringer penny shot gets two extra shells. 
Honestly, that is really good. I was playing the Penny Derringer the last couple of weeks occasionally, and having only two shells is kind of defeating the purpose of that thing. <laughs> Why? This is nice. Now you can farm meat heads or deal extra damage to bosses. It's okay. I don't think it will increase the pick rate, but that right there, yeah, thumbs up from me. But we have more balance changes, so let's jump to the next slide. The Lamad family gets more buffs. And uh, that's pretty nice. So they increased the muzzle velocity for that thing. The base Lamad is now 375, up from 300. The upper mat is 530 now, up from 450. And the carbine is now 460, up from 375. Whew, okay, we're through the balance changes right now. We're gonna jump into the gameplay changes. Okay, there uh, will be a few things that might shock you, so you better sit down. Flare Pistol, Fusies, Star Shell, and Dragon Breath can now ignite downed and dead hunters. Yeah. Th this will be very interesting because what you can do now is play a Lamet that got already pretty buffed, then load Star Shell or Dragon Breath in that thing, and then have with Star Shell an actual range burn, whatever you want to call this, on people that you killed at mid range. Uh, this is gonna be interesting, honestly. I mean, we can all agree that <laughs> the Flare Pistol, the Fusies, the Starship and Dragon Breath are not very meta. They're kind of trash. So, uh, <laughs> a buff is great in that direction, though. Yeah, let's see. This will be interesting. Dude, the Lam <laughs> imagine, you bring the Lamet just for burning people that are down. I think this is pretty cool. Uh, I will probably hate it when they do it to me, but when I'm doing it, it's great. So let's see. Then, and this is something I was begging Crytek to do for a long time. Bounty carriers get instinct. So if you didn't play one of the last events, instinct was an event trait. The moment you hit dark side and people were close to you, you got an orange glow around your screen. And that's exactly what it's doing right now for bounty carriers. So you get the orange glow when hunters are within 75 meters. You get it the whole time though, so it's not just the moment you run out of dark side boost. You hit it, even if you have dark side boost seconds left, you see the orange glow. It's also making the spinning with dark side a little bit more difficult because sometimes enemy hunters, their orange glow will blend into that. So doing the spins very fast might make you miss that. So do it a little bit slower now. Poison bomb got buffed. Nice. It's now eight minutes instead of five. Eight minutes? Um, I don't know why this was necessary. I mean, nobody played the poison bomb, but I don't think the duration was a big issue for that. You can block now something for eight minutes if they don't have an antidote shot. Keep in mind that uh, choke bombs can get rid of that, and I think choke bolts as well. So uh, there might be a way out. Let's see. Now, there's also a buff for the heavy knife. The light melee attack consumes less stamina. It's now 9 points of stamina instead of 15. This will not increase the pick rate for the heavy knife, but okay. <laughs> Let's see. It has awesome skins though, so maybe I will play it because of that. And, and this feels very nice when you play. The camera is not locked while you vault. So when you vault right now over a fence, you can look left and you can look right. That is pretty nice but we have more gameplay changes it's not over as i said these patch notes are pretty <laughs> pretty insane lightfoot gets nerfed <gasps> lightfoot doesn't muffle jump sounds anymore yeah so uh right now you jump the first jump is muffled and then there's like an internal cooldown the next jump is not muffled now no matter what you do Lightfoot is not muffling that. So, vaulting, climbing, that's all more quiet, but uh, not the jumping sound anymore. I I don't like this. I'm gonna be honest here, because I jump around a lot when I play, and I like it that she's not doing this, ha, ha, or the dude is like, ha, ha, this is annoying. So, uh, not a fan of this, but okay. <laughs> Was probably necessary, I don't know. They probably did that because people, again, 
abused this and did this crouch jump thing. I don't know, can we not just play the game the way it's meant to be played? But alright, now we all have to suffer because of this. The baseball bat heavy doesn't one-shot Immos anymore. Yeah, okay, I think this is this is this is alright. The baseball bat, a lot of people are saying it's too strong and uh, this is not the end of the world. You do a light attack afterwards, I think, and they just collapse, so it's whatever. By the way, this does not affect the heavy damage against players. So players are still a one shot. <laughs> if they don't have horn skin, but who buys horn skin? Then we also have increased damage for the heavy attack for all the hammers. That means the railroad hammer and the sledgehammer that you can find in the world. Yeah, I don't know if this will increase my pick rate for the railroad hammer. I will probably still take the baseball bat, mostly because it's a medium slot and the baseball bat is not. Especially if the baseball bat is still killing players with a heavy attack, why should I take uh, whatever. Uh, le let's try it once it's released. Choke bombs don't trigger traps anymore. Yeah, okay. Um, might be good, might be bad. Because right now, if you choke bomb a teammate and it sets off traps, you know you're not allowed to necro. Right now, you think, oh, necro is safe, and you necro them into the traps and they die. Uh, on the other hand, maybe you choke an area and you will trigger traps that the enemy plays at windows and doors and it will save your ass. I have to play this more to kind of understand is this good or bad. Then decoy fuses have now a small explosion and they can destroy windows and door frames. So they're not dealing insane amount of damage when they hit you. Okay, that's, that's not the case. They're adding these small explosions. So you can destroy windows and that you can destroy doors a little bit more easily at range. I like this because very often the bounty carriers, they just, you know, uh, camp in the boss lair. They close all the windows and you can see inside and there's almost no opportunity to shoot from outside. Now with the decoy fuses, you can destroy the windows and I think that's good. Let's see. And also the shovel heavy attack deals more damage. All the Shovel Knights out there will probably enjoy this. That's not it though. The Shovel Light Attack consumes less stamina. Shovel buff all the way. I mean, everybody likes a good bonk, am I right? Pitchfork like and heavy consumes less stamina. Yeah, okay. Regeneration Shot has now a five second delay. As I said, these balance changes in this video are going all different paths. Uh, this is kind of huge. Five seconds in PvP is forever. Regen shot is pretty good right now. It was already valid before, but right now it's really good. And now I think it will still be good in drawn out fights, but uh, for the aggressive play where you're close to people, the region shot probably lost some value here. Five seconds in PvP is forever. But, let's see. I don't play it that often, I play it occasionally. Have to try it out next week, Wednesday, I guess. Then, <laughs> very important change. The weapon charms have now less movement range and they sway a little bit less. Some of them are really goddamn annoying, especially on the small pistols and they fly all over the screen. But that's nice. Okay, that's it with the gameplay changes, but we are not done yet. Okay. Gun oil and blueprints get a complete rework. So the gun oil is not cleaning your weapons anymore. It unlocks now. There's two ways it's doing that. The first one is the weapon that you have equipped has still weapon variants that are locked. So it's gonna unlock the next one. If you have already everything unlocked from the weapon that you're holding, you unlock a random uh, weapon family unlock. So, as long as you don't have everything unlocked, you will get value out of gun oil. The next thing are blueprints, and they unlock three random things. And they spawn exclusively at workbenches. Now you're like, what the hell are workbenches? We're gonna talk about that later. A workbench spawns in every compound, that's just what I'm gonna tell you right now. I hope that there will be more rework for that because I still want to have an option to fix cracked scopes and I hope that the work 
workbench is something where you can fix your guns because that's what a workbench should do. Would be nice. Honestly, after almost six years, can we just please get rid of cracked scopes? That would be nice. Well, to be fair, they weren't in the game at the beginning. But you know what I mean. All right, then. Traits got also changed, so let's jump to that. And I think you will like what we're gonna discuss right now with the trait changes. All Scopesmith traits got fused. This is so good, and they cost like two points. Or oh, it costs two points because there's only one now. I hate it when you get a hunter and they spawn with, oh, Dead Eye Scopesmith, Marksman Scopesmith, and Sniper Scopesmith on one hunter. Nice. Oh, you wanted to play a Dead Eye that round? Well, next round I want to play a Sniper. Mm. You have to respect that trait and buy that one, and you will lose a point in the process. Yeah, so, uh, great change. Um, steady Hand and Steady Aim are fused now, too. I like that. No more asking in Twitch chat. Mike, does Steady Aim work for blah, blah, blah? <laughs> so this is great. No more confusion on that part. And also, all the Iron Sight traits got fused into Iron Eye. And that costs three points. That's great too, because iron sights are iron sights. If I'm using a Vetterly, if I'm using a Winfield, I like this. I like this. So you buy one trade, and then you can afterwards play all the guns with iron sights, and you're gonna be happy. That's great. Now, hundred hands and dew claw is now fused. Insane value. I honestly think that the pick rate for dew claw was. 0%, maybe 0.1% because one streamer decided to go for some meme clips, but that's it, okay? That is nice, I, I think, so yeah, Duke Law value incoming. Next one, that is cool though, a silent and tomahawk are now fused. I know that a few people picked tomahawk, but uh, again, it's mostly for the memes, and now with this you get some value for your meme. Awesome! It, reform, it can transform your uh, tomahawk into a one-shot close-range weapon. It can transform your throwing knife into uh, a regular knife, and then you can pick dusters. Although the knuckle knife is still supreme over the dusters, but hey. Good change. And then light foot down to five points instead of six, because it got nerfed. I think it's still very, very good if you want to sneak up on people, so uh, it will not disappear into oblivion. But yeah, slightly nerfed. Okay, let's talk about other stuff. We have equipment prices. I mean, with the bat, we kind of saw that one coming. Then also the door family gets slightly cheaper. But I didn't put any price tags here because it's, I think it's 690 now. Nice. So yeah, and the melee tool is honestly throwing axes now 50 instead of 30, the knife is 40 instead of 30, the knuckle knife is 50 instead of 15, so yeah, sure, you might feel that, but overall, uh, I didn't put that in the slide. It blows up the slide and then I have to make another slide. I have enough slides for this, okay? Then Derringer Penny shot 263 from 72 and the flash bomb is 25 from 47. Yeah, that thing is still in the game. I know, didn't see it in ages. I wonder why. Okay, but we have more changes and we're gonna dive into them right now. So now we're gonna talk about recruitment changes. Now, recruits will have a better loadout synergy. What does that mean? So back in the days, or even right now in life, sometimes you have a hunter that spawns with a hand cannon and with a railroad hammer. And it's kind of like, yeah, this is both very close range or you have a hunter that comes with quartermaster and fanning. So they try to find a way, an algorithm to make recruitment hunters that have, yeah, a Nagan pistol in the wind field and the trade is gonna be uh, iron eye. Stuff like that, going in that direction. Then when you have like, for example, a sniper, you get the sniper scopesmith trade for that. I think that makes sense because sometimes the Recruitment hunters were kind of weird. Also, weapons have now a higher chance to have a fitting trait. So I guess if there's a hunter, a tier 3 hunter rolling with a terminus, the hunter might come with levering, which I think is cool. However, as always, I mean, it's already live right now. Tier 1 hunters are blocked from the expensive weapons and the hunters will always have two random consumables and three tools. And the three tools are random melee, the first aid kit, 
and the random tool. I think this is good, especially when you have new players and they check out the game and they have these recruitment hunters. They make more sense now and you can play them a little bit better out of the box. Without knowing the game, you can just probably take them and hopefully have fun. Now, the traits are also kind of fixed now. If you have a free hunter or a tier one hunter, they come now with two traits. The tier two hunter comes with three traits and a tier three hunter comes with four traits. I like that, especially with the respackers, you can probably play around with that a little bit more and make your own creations. But that's not it with the recruitment changes. We also have legendary hunters and they're even cheaper now. They are now 100 bucks instead of 200. Keep in mind back in the days they were 300. They come with three traits and um, up to two traits can be tailored to a playstyle. And the trade value should reach seven points minimum. Now, if you get less for whatever reason, you get three points that you can spend. Yeah, sure, why not? It is possible to go over seven points, then you just don't get any free points. So let's see in terms of balance how that will work out. I don't think legendary hunters are gonna be paid to win, but let's see what's gonna happen in a couple of weeks and months. All right, recruitment changes, but there is also more in terms of uh, what happens if you're running low on cash. Yes, happens to a few people and there's no shame in it, but that will influence your recruitment hunters. So the free hunters only appear when your account balance is below $20,000. So no more free hunter runs. Yeah, okay. I don't think this is the biggest impact. Uh, sometimes I know we all want to play the free hunters as a challenge or a meme, but I can live without that. There's enough challenges and memes that you can do and create <laughs> yourself. The lower the balance, the more free hunters you will see. And if there's no hunters in your roster, you can reshuffle the free hunters as often as you want. So if you have 50 bucks, you have no hunters in your roster, you as low as you can get in terms of hunt economies you, you can hit that roster or that reshuffle button until you get something that you like um yeah as i said reshuffle an unlimited amount of times and um <laughs> oh god all right if you have less than two thousand bucks and you want to buy something that is more expensive than 500 <laughs> it's gonna be a pop-up wants you that you're about to run out of money this kind of feels like the game is making fun of you oh my god look at this guy he's fucking poor uh yeah i mean i guess it was necessary i don't know i find this funny uh if you see the pop up you will probably not have a great day but yeah that's it with the recruitment changes oh my god let's let's jump to the new guns okay Okay, that comes pretty late in this video. You probably just jumped here by uh, timestamp. So let's talk about the new guns. There's gonna be a Caldwell Pax True Shot. That is the Pax with the long barrel. No, it's not suppressed. Lots of people are asking me if it's suppressed from the trailer video. I think I kind of like that. It probably will have a uh, higher muzzle velocity. So that's gonna be nice. And uh, <laughs> there's gonna be new custom ammo. And if you pair it with the Caldwell Pax True Shot, you're gonna have some pretty fun results. Then we have the Dolch Claw. I'm not really a Claw player, so uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. I'm not gonna pick that. However, we get the Blaster from Han Solo. The Dolch 96 Deadeye. It, it, you won't get any closer to the Blaster from Han than this one. Uh, if I ever make a video with this, I'm gonna edit Blaster sounds because it's gonna be hilarious. Uh, before people ask me in the comment section all these weird questions, yes, you can do wield the Dodge 96 Dead Eye. Why? I don't know, but uh, you can. And for the ultimate meme, maybe you should. Then we have the drilling hand cannon that also got revealed in the trailer and the drilling hand cannon hatchet. Yeah, this will be pretty crazy. I mentioned that already in the last video. Just think about the loadouts you can build here. For example, you just buy Quartermaster, you have a springy marksman with bleed rounds, then you have a drilling with FMJ, 
You might have penny or slugs or buckshot in the barrel and if that misses, you can go to the hatchet? What? This is gonna be the jack of all trades loadout and there's gonna be just so much more. So, let me know in the comment section below what kind of loadouts you would play with this because this is gonna get spicy. And then yes, we're gonna get a katana and no, it's not a saber skin and no, it's not a machete skin. It's gonna be a new melee weapon. So, that one will be interesting. Let it away a little bit and it's strong. But uh, I don't want to spoil too much. We will have a dedicated video about this. Ah, yeah, and also the people who made fun of me, making fun of other people, well, making fun of it, I made a joke with, uh, oh yeah, the katana, and we're gonna have all these Naruto dudes and the weeps and whatnot. Uh, I watch anime myself sometimes, so okay. And people were like, well, actually, there are no katanas in Naruto, because katanas are for samurais. Baka. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I know, they, they were just, you know, friendly banter, but sometimes the comment section is so freaking wild and I love it. Then we have one more, and I don't think they showed that in the trailer. We're gonna have the Lamette Mark II Carbine Marksman. Uh, so Marksman compact ammo with a shotgun. I wait for the suppressor on that thing. <laughs> So uh, that will be interesting. Again, it's a compact ammo marksman with a super slow bullet. The hip fire is not too bad on that thing, so maybe we can just play with that. Uh, and sometimes, you know, people hold still and then it's gonna be a good shot. I'm gonna try it. Let's see how valid it will actually be. But new guns come with new ammo. The uppercut gets FMJ. And that's what I mentioned earlier. The cover packs gets high velocity. It's gonna be a fast boy for a pistol round. And the Dolch gets Dum Dum ammo and the Dolch gets FMJ ammo. So the Han Solo Blaster will make you bleed. Ah, uh, the Winfield will get poison ammo and the Winfield C will get poison ammo as well. Winfield Centennial, high velocity. High velocity on a gun that already has 600 something. I mentioned that already in my previous videos. I'm not a fan of this. Uh, at one point, if this keeps going, all guns will have access to all custom ammo. One day, we're gonna have a Sparks Dum Dum. I'm joking. Please don't. Okay, please. Please don't. But, uh, I don't know. The style of a few guns is getting less and less because, oh yeah, I played this one. Oh yeah, this has Dum Dum. This is nice. And now every pistol gets it. We're not there yet, but soon. Not a fan of this. Not every gun needs all custom ammo, but I think Crytek doesn't care about my opinion or think their approach is correct. We will see. Okay, so that's it with new guns and new ammo. We have, I think, three more chapters, so let's go. Okay, I want to show the guns a little bit more in detail, so we do have a showcase here right now. So, this is the Deadeye Dodge. It does not need the Deadeye Scopesmith perk, because, well, it's semi-auto. Regular Dodge, I mean, you know it already, it has the claw attachment now. The claw attachment is actually not that bad. So, heavy attack, light attack, cross torso, heavy attack phase, light attack phase. The light attack does apply bleed, though. Yeah, not the strongest one. What you have to be careful though when you play the Dolch Deadeye is this right here. The reload will always be like this. Even when the Dolch is empty, you do not get the clip reload. So be careful with that one. Okay, let's try the other guns. Okay, then here we have the packs of the long barrel. Let's just quickly check the stats. So it does deal actually a little bit more damage, as you can see. And it has a higher muzzle velocity. That just comes with the longer barrel. So here you can see both stats. You can compare that for yourself. I have to say, crosshair size is the same. But it looks like the same. Okay, those are all my dog targets. So. Yeah, I like this. This might be cool. Might be awesome. 
Now you see the difference to the regular packs and stats. Um, so tiny bit more velocity, or a tiny bit more damage, but a nice increase in velocity. Let's try the other ones. We have a couple more. Okay, here we go. We have now the drilling, the sawn off one. I mean, you know how drilling works, right? So I have to say the sway is noticeable, of course, compared to the full size one. Same with this one. I think if we have a look at the weapons, way and everything, yeah. There is, I mean, of course, this one here kills with a heavier attack, which is, of course, beautiful. Uh, sway is a little bit worse on this one. Not by much, though. It's like a... Yeah, it's nice. Feels good. I mean, like a Romero hatchet, so if you're familiar with the hatchet family, easy peasy. Okay, let's check the rest real quick. Then we have this one right here, the Lemet Carbine Marksman. Uh, that is wild. Yes, it has the shotgun shell attached to it. And, um... Yeah, I don't have the Marksman Scopesmith trait, but... This is gonna be interesting. I don't know how often you will actually use this. It feels good. Bullet is, of course, slow. The cool thing is, though, that... Of course, that's a headshot. The hip fire is not too bad. I mean, this is, of course... Okay, what the hell? Why are my tests always like this? So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. The hip fire... You get a headshot or you don't. <laughs> okay, we have one more thing, though, that I want to show to you guys. And here we go with the katana. So you have the light attack. Ooh. And the light attack deals enough damage to kill you. Okay. So let me check this here real quick. Light attack is 165 and the heavy is 280. Okay. So you have a piercing attack. And you have a slash attack. So piercing for scrap pick, for example. Or if you want a little bit more range. And rending for butcher and other stuff. Honestly, that is pretty nice. There's one thing, though, that... I did not mention in the trades, actually. I might add that. Otherwise, you see it here. We have this one in here. This is Martialist. It's a new trade that will come. And uh, let's read the description real quick. Martialist allows a katana to be sheathed, which or sheathed, which enables a first strike attack to does extra damage. So it looks like this. The inspect also changes I'm well, of course I'm covering this now but you get the idea and then you deal this attack here <coughs> and it's a super horizontal slash not only does it look fucking badass when you do that you can also do that I think when you're out of stamina I mean this is easy to test out of stamina I'm gonna sheath it and then still works so even without stamina you can do this move uh yeah so this is gonna be interesting those are all the new guns that they added uh you can try them in the shooting range yourself if you want to and uh let's go back to the patch notes video okay we have a few world changes what does that mean so the rule of two changes remember when you find a cat register rule of two so, you and your teammate can take it, and then nobody else can interact with the cash register anymore. <gasps> That's gonna change! Cash register for everybody, baby! And the same is with envelopes, purses, and trades. Blueprints and gun oils are included as well. So, I think this is cool, because sometimes we have quests to find envelopes or purses, and if other teams lose it already, it's harder for you. This seems to not work with toolboxes, and that is good, because it would bad <laughs> also to remove the generators i i don't know why they do some things sometimes but yeah electric lights have a chance to be turned on during night serpent night and ash bloom ash bloom you saw it already in trailer is gonna be the new um daytime setting and the only way to turn them off is by destroying them 
I mean, sure, the searchlights are now turned on and maybe people are gonna use them. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, okay, they probably have an idea reasons why they did that. I kind of liked it because the generators was able to muffle sound and you can then sneak around and also I thought they would do a little bit more with the generators in the future and with electricity. Maybe some electricity traps that you can turn on with the generator. Well, rep, that's, uh, that's gone now. Shame. More wall changes though. The speed of elevators is doubled. They're now lightning fast. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I used some of these elevators and they're freaky fast. This is actually kind of nice because you can now push a little bit easier through elevators and you're not stuck there forever. Like elevators, pushing through an elevator was a death trap, might be less of a death trap now. We will see. Also, you get new ladders in Arden Parish. I didn't see them myself yet, but just so you know, keep an eye out for them and check them out. The shooting range has now also the event weapons and traits. I think this is cool because not everybody finishes the battle pass or buys the battle pass or whatnot. And then they only get the guns after the event. And with this they can at least try them in the shooting range. I think that's cool. And sometimes people don't understand how event traits work. And you can just test them in the shooting range. That's a nice addition. And then the last chapter, or almost last chapter, the workbenches, I want to talk about them real quick. They are in every compound. They have a chance, a chance to spawn gun oil, blueprint, hunt dollar, blood bound pouches and specific weapons. Specific weapons, we're going to talk about it in a second. It's the only place now for gun oil and blueprints to spawn. So you can actually farm this and hope for a good chance for blueprints and unlock a lot very, very fast. The found weapons are variants, so what does it mean? For example, um, you will not find a base Vedali, you might find a science Vedali. You will not find a base Mosin, you might find a Mosin Baronet. So you get upgraded versions from that, which is kind of cool. I like this. I don't know if these guns will be contraband or not. Uh, didn't try that yet, but that's interesting. So that's most of the patch notes. It's not all. Um, Patch 1.15 has a lot of changes. Not everything is always gameplay related, but enough hit there. I think that this patch will be will be nice. There's a few things like uh, Dragon Breath, Igniting Downed Hunters, and other stuff that really engage with the balance, and I hope it will not backfire. But uh, as always, try it out, give feedback. As always, give constructive feedback, not oh my god, stupid death ruining the game. This is not feedback and believe me, it will not motivate anybody to solve the issue, if it's even an issue and not just a you problem. But okay, I hope you enjoyed today's video. That was a long patch on the video, but uh, yeah, okay. Let me know what you think about this. Let's roll the outro. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, there's a lot of stuff that we need to discuss. There's going to be a gameplay video tomorrow. I know you want to see that too, but stuff that is about like uh, death videos or about trailers that has to come the next day or the same day. Otherwise, there's just no point. Four or five days later, nobody cares about this video anymore. So yeah, there you go. Um, then I want to say thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing, as always. Thank you for all the support that you're dropping over there. Just to let you guys know, there might be in the upcoming videos uh, with the old patron wall. And that's because I added these videos in November and didn't find the time yet to release them. But honestly, if you think I missed you, just reach out, shoot me a message over Patreon, Discord or wherever. And then I'm going to check that for you. Absolutely no problem. Okay. Whew. Have a good one. Thank you for watching 1.15. Yeah, we get new weapons like the katana. There's gonna be some crazy balance changes. Ooh, let's see how they will feel. I see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye-bye.